Hi everyone and welcome to the round 8 report from the Chorus Tournament 2010. There were 4 wins in the round, all for the white pieces. Caruana beat Tvyakov, Leko beat Smeets, Karyakin beat Short and Kramnik beat Nakamura, which is the game I chose to do for this round. The two other high profile games of the round, Ivanchuk Anand and Carlson Shirov, were both draws. So to get into this game anyway, Kramnik had the white pieces and opened with d4, to which Nakamura answered f5, which is the Dutch defence, an opening that's rarely seen at top level. Similarly to the Sicilian, it aims to create imbalance in the position, however it's something of a weakening move for Black's king side, and it does nothing with regard to peace development. That aside, it takes immediate control of e4, and Black can often generate a king side attack in the middle game. Nakamura used it in his game against Vichy and Anand as well in this tournament and it resulted in a draw in that game. So play continued with g3 which is planning a kingside fianchetto which is a good idea in the Dutch seeing as it bolsters the defence of the white king which is a prudent decision given that it's more than likely black will be pawn storming here on the king's side. So knight f6, bishop g2, and g6, also planning to fee in shadow. This is known as the Leningrad variation of the Dutch. And now came some standard developing moves with c4, bishop g7, knight c3, castles, knight f3, d6, castles, c6, and rook b1. A mysterious rook move, but a sensible one too. The rook's taken out of the firing line of the bishop here on g7 and queenside expansion with b4 etc can be initiated later. It was also the last book move of the game as here Nakamura played knight e4 and in the post game analysis Kramnik said that the night before this game he had been pretty annoyed trying to find an effective plan against the Dutch as although he knew it wasn't possible for black to equalize with it he still couldn't find a way to get an advantage himself and then it came to him not to take on e4 after knight takes e4 oh sorry after um, knight e4 and that's what he decided upon here playing um, queen c2 instead of just taking on e4 here which creates problems after f takes e4 and this knight moving in maybe d5 and Fritz indicates that this move gives white a slight edge, especially after black's best answer with knight takes c3 because it's not clear how else he can continue in this position. And Kramnik answered with b takes c3, opening up the b-file for the rook on b1, pressure on b7, and creating some dynamic chances later with the doubled pawns, as you'll see. e5 is how Nakamura continued, then came rook d1 and e4, gaining good space for black to manoeuvre his pieces if only he'd developed them. Nakamura has one piece developed here compared to Kramnik's five pieces developed, so obviously Kramnik has a decent lead in development, and he answered here with knight g5, and after h6, knight h3, and the knight can head to f4, but Nakamura stopped that now with g5, another pawn move, and it seems unorthodox, but that's because the Dutch is an unorthodox opening, and Nakamura has been known to break fundamental rules in the past and still win brilliantly, but unfortunately this game wasn't an example of that, and you know to play in such a way against Kramnik would be a great feat. He continued here with f3, challenging the black centre and hoping to open things up and exploit, exploit black's lack of development. Nakamura answered with d5, which Kramnik said was pretty much forced, as after, for example, e takes f3 instead, now comes e takes f3, and this opening of the position, as I said, should favour white before long because of his lead in development. So d5, now knight f2 from Kramnik, which Fritz didn't like, preferring instead c takes d5, where after c takes d5 and c4, he judges the position as equal. And with that combination there, c takes d5, now c takes d5, c4, we can see some of the uh, advantages in having doubled pawns like this. It allows for, you know, effectively having two pawns on the c file. This um, makes it a lot easier to attack the black center. 
and that happened in the game continuation as well in a few moves time after d5 came knight f2 from Kramnik as I said and now king h8 which is a move that Nakamura spent 45 minutes deciding upon so of course we can only speculate as to the depths of his planning and intentions but judging by the way the play developed his main idea was to get a rook to g8 and pawn storm the white king and Kramnik said after the game that the longer Nakamura spent thinking on this move the more he started liking his position and it's easy to see why as white has all the activity here whereas already black is starting to look a bit passive despite the space advantage and Fritz gave an interesting alternative line here with a pawn sack instead of king h8 playing e3 and after bishop takes e3 f4 and black has good compensation for the pawn after g takes f4 and g takes f4 and it may have been something along these lines that Nakamura was considering but perhaps he decided to play king h8 and rook g8 first and see how Kramnik chose to proceed before making any committal pawn moves so king h8 anyway is what Nakamura played now came c takes d5, c takes d5 and c4 that same continuation as before and this move c4 puts pressure on the backward pawn at d5 and opens the position up which as I said definitely favours white of this position Kramnik said that the only conclusion he could come to as to where Nakamura went wrong was his choice of opening so now came e3 that same pawn sack as we saw before the idea of which is to open either the g or the h file for black and Kramnik said that this was an interesting continuation and the best way to deal with black's problematic position he answered with knight d3 declining the sacrifice and instead getting the knight to a better square and offering the d-pawn as a sack because it's being attacked by this bishop here um, although Nakamura didn't take it as it's clearly bad to if bishop takes d4 now knight b4 discovering an attack on the bishop and best for black is bishop g7 but now comes knight takes d5 gaining back the pawn with a far superior position white's a lot better here this knight at d5 is a very strongly placed piece and black's queen side still completely undeveloped um, so anyway of course Nakamura didn't go down that path and instead played knight c6 and still now white is starting to get an overall edge in the position despite the pressure on the d4 pawn here and Kramnik now accepted the offered pawn with bishop takes e3 which is okay as far as black's concerned in terms of material because Nakamura now has knight takes d4 winning the pawn back although Fritz thinks that this wasn't best preferring instead f4 well after g takes f4 now knight takes d4 because after bishop takes d4 bishop takes d4 check and knight f2 there's bishop f5 and at least black is getting some activity and it should be noted too that playing instead at this point instead of bishop f5 rook takes f4 is inferior since it leads to rook takes d4 and after rook takes d4 queen b2 pinning the rook with e3 coming next and also possible instead of knight takes d4 was queen e8 and this is the move that Kramnik gave as the most precise and in the post-mortem the players agreed that white is still better after the continuation queen c1 d takes c4 knight e5 knight takes e5 d takes e5 queen takes c5 and f4 sacking a pawn and white gets excellent compensation for it after g takes f4 bishop takes f4 queen e6 to defend h6 from the queen and bishop battery here but now either rook d6 or bishop d5 and white is doing well with a big edge in either continuation but knight takes d4 is what nakamura played okay that's the end of part one